Today we're raiding AI generated Magic the Gathering cards. Now, will they do be doable? Will they cyber or will it danger? Let's check out Orzov Elemental. It's not even Orzov. I mean, it's a fail already at the start. It's a Simic. Simic colors. Okay, creature hybris. It's a 4-3 with mutate for a blue and one generic. Bears player gains seven life. Okay, this. It's not an elemental. It's not even a bear. Uh, it's a complete fa flavor fail all around. And by the way, how the hell do I determine who the bears player is? Like that thou who controls a bear? Get it out of here. Not even doable, in my opinion. Okay, we got the fountain of shrieking. It does not sound like a fountain I want to be around. Red, black, too generic for an aura. Uh, enchanted ar enchant artifact or creature. So we can enchant soul ring. That's a little. That's a little spicy. Enchanted lander is a <laughs> commander. All islands. Ah, oh, we should have cut it off at commander. As if we can like enchant. If it's not, we can't even enchant lands in general. It's got to be like a creature land or an artifact land. As far as I'm concerned. It's gotta be like Ancient Den or Dryad Arbor or like Treetop Village. Whenever Enchanted Land is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional red. That is so hard to pull. That is so much work for an extra mana. Enchanted Land is a commander all islands. Can we command all the islands? We steal everybody else's islands. Land can deal commander damage. That's, that's what I wanted to think it could do. Like the land becomes your commander. You can have more. You can have more than one commander. You know, like so. What's the big deal? We have partner. Partner exists, so we should be able to make other things that aren't your commander or suddenly your commander. And we're not even do. Is this even doable? I don't think we can command all the islands. Okay, we got to keep a lookout for things where chaos ensues. Apparently, that's a real mechanic, but uh, not on this show. Non-permanence on the battlefield. Are you serious? This is like a rules text in the title. Alright, non-permanence such as sorceries and instants cannot enter the battlefield. Okay, you got it! <laughs> if one would enter the battlefield, it remains in its previous zone instead. See rule 304.4 and 307.4. Oh, 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 I think this is... Oh, this is not real in actual card created by the AI. They're just clarifying some rules. Non-permanent such as sorceries. Okay, so basically instants and sorceries are never allowed to hit the battlefield. Well, that makes it a lot, a lot of these AI generated cards just crap and useless. We need to play in a world where the instants and sorcery can get on the battlefield. Attack in the red zone. Alright, thank you very much for the little bit of rules text over there. Uh, Ether Hollow, two mana legendary artifact, pay three. You have 20 cost is mana value until end of turn. I cost that much mana? That makes me very expensive. Uh, th these are just like not, these aren't even going anywhere. Legend, you have, and I can activate this. You have 20 cost is mana value until end of turn. For three mana, I cost 20 mana. You better believe it. Some people think they're worth a million dollars. Well, you know what? Well, I'm worth 20 mana. And if I have infinite mana, I'll be worth infinite infinite mana. Alright, uh... Next up, we've got... Well! We have a green, two generic sorcery. Exile target permanent. That is very interesting. So it's like just a new... It's an OP version of Beast Within. I think this is doable. I think this is a doable card. Now they're just giving green everything. Now green gets to ex <laughs> green gets to exile anything it wants. Not even destroy it. I think it's it's so what you guys think. You some people are just like, yeah, it's Zybers. It danger. It's possible. It's possible. But it's sorcery. Like, look, for Beast Within, it was an instant for a green two generic, and whatever you destroyed, you got a three three beast in uh in exchange here this is a sorcery speed removal spell yeah land destruction well green always had land destruction green is one of the land destruction that is weird how many land destroy everything destroys land except blue black destroys land red green and white i exile your permanence yeah <laughs> i like that well 
I don't know what I have to say. Yeah, well, well, I guess I just have to take it now, can't we? Yeah, power corrupt beast within. It's Zybers, but I hate it because it's green. Well, it can do well in some board states. I guess that could be the you know, well, it's just that powerful. That's just how it is. I actually could depict Dolor, Dolores Caliborn after killing her husband by letting him fall into an open well. I mean, that's possible. Yeah, well, you fell down the well. Well, hit <laughs> danger. <laughs> I like the card. I like the stock. Yeah, it's literally a bed and creeping. No, creeping. Oh, yeah, you, yeah you're right. Yeah, it's better, literally better than. Well, well, I don't think green was supposed to have this powerful of like rep spot removal at three mana. All right, I like it. I, I honestly, I think it probably would see play. It would be, give I don't know Bant control or even Sultai control a little bit of a boost that probably it needs. Okay, we got Renazu, the Denier. It's a white, two generic, two one legendary creature, human barbarian beast with forest walk. You can't have Convergil causes abilities. And tap five on tap knights you control. Move or found. I thought it was going to be move around. Okay, this thing chaos ensues. Makes absolutely no sense. Got to move or found, people. Move out of the way! I don't know what you're talking about. Well, move or found! Okay, now I get it. True, you can't converge will cause ab ab abolities. It's true. I will not! Yeah, it not Zyber shred it to the to the gallows with Ron Nazu the the Denier. Okay, ability words. Oh, it's just it's just rules text. That's okay, we can skip those. Okay, defoked scab. It's a two mana artifact, pay two tap, target opponent gets a loyalty counter and a planes. Can I kill them now? Creatures you control get plus two, plus two. Holy crap! It's like strictly better crusade for anybody or any anthem for two mana. But I don't get the, lo <sighs> but you can't even give people loyalty abilities. Yeah, opponent gets the loyalty ability. No, hey! Listen up, people. We're all technically planeswalkers, all right? If you think of the flavor of the game, we're a planeswalker. And those those buddies on the battlefield, like Chandra, Jace, they are the same as us. Except we have a deck of cards. They have these loyalty abilities. So why can't we have a loyalty ability? And you get a plane. Where do the planes even come from? Do I have to take it from my deck? Do I take it from my sideboard? It's not like they can go in there. Then not everyone's playing a planes in their deck. Maybe they gain a life. Uh, these hoes ain't loyal. They are now. <laughs> the Bill's mom. The ability word words card is important for the stream. Please read it. Is it? Abilities word flavor words do not have rules associated with them, such as channel imprint revolt heavy power hammer. Removing adding the word to an to an ability does not affect anything other than being flavorfully wrong. All right. Do we have rules now for like the AI? Example, if you see an AI card with heroic, it doesn't inherently mean the ability triggers only when the permanent is targeted. Okay, that I don't get. Yeah, planeswalkers rejoice. We all, I, I technically, it's not doable. Not do, I, we can't get a loyalty counter. And if we do, like what happens? Can I, can you attack my loyalty and then kill me? Or do I, or do I also have my life in addition to that? It's both OP and has synergy with Planeswalk. Oh yeah, that's true. They get a Planes. They get... Hold on, they get a Planes. Do they put it in their hand? It doesn't even specify what zone this Planes goes into. No reason players can't have loyalty counters. They just can't spend them. I guess so. You can lose them still. Players get Spark counters to activate Sork Spark abilities. It would Zyber if it gave you it gave you banding too. It also should just give us loyalty. Imagine us the play player have loyalty abilities in addition to our loyalty. Anyway, I think it's BS. BS card. Okay, we got the Hodoring Giant. It looks like it's a dinosaur. What? It looks like an angel. Alright, we have a blue two generic one one flyer. Uh, with a black one generic. Hodoring giant gains flying until end of turn. Alright, we have a flying di- uh, There are flying dinosaurs. The Aerodactyls, the Pterodactyls. 
Um, I probably mentioned a Pokemon. I don't. One of those is an actual dinosaur. One of them is a uh, uh, is a Pokemon. It's do it is doable. Okay, we we got that much far. It is a doable card. It is a very very crap card. I mean, there's li like I think the baseline in a draft is like three mana two two flyer, and I have to. This is a one one. And I gotta pay two mana in another color. Wait a minute, it already has flying. I'm giving what I'm giving it double flying here. Flying Seption. <laughs> we must go deeper. It gets it gets more flying until end of turn. Flying squared. Well, if they somehow lose flying, you can get it again. That is there we go. Will of Darkness to solve it. Just in case someone's playing. What is it? There's like a, an enchantment or something like that. It's a very it's, I think it's a reserve list card. All creatures lose flying. So you get to give give it flying again. Well, anyway, uh, okay, it's it's is doable but very stupid, very very useless card. Okay, we got the Taziat Toma Lens. It's a black black white red red double X. With what is going on down here? I don't, I, you know, I'm not bad at maths, but I can't maths this hard or so easily during a game. Three, two, four, X times th three, three out of four. Oh no, actually it's three T four X three uh, divided by four. Oh, this is a creature. Sorry, the power, okay, the, the power is just, I can't even, I don't even want to calculate the power. Okay, Taziot Toma Lens gets minus three, minus three. Why would I want to do that? You can tap and pay life. What am I gonna spend it on? And then we got Kyunsers for a so, so weird Wooberg with a. I'm not even gonna explain this mana cost. You may Ruckle and Umba, Unthutkla add. You may pay red to generic and or snow when you do Cocky the type with Thogoli. You has a Tarding enchanted. For your information, M. Pl destroyed played. Get out of here. Get out. Spell check that one next time, please. It's, it's like a... At first I thought it was reading a different language, but they're just mixing too much English in there. Yeah. So... <laughs> Abzo says, so, so close to being functional. Ugh. So close to nailing it there. Yeah, chaos ensues and, uh, definitely. Yeah, destroy it probably. I don't even know what it's trying to do. <laughs> destroy played. Yeah, just just destroy itself. Why don't you? Yeah, actual AI card. This is an AI card as if it loosely understood. It like read a few different languages and then just melded them together. The English cards, the French cards, the Spanish cards. Okay, undefined X. If X is undefined on a card, either missing, uh, the player defines X to any value. Oh. Okay, that's interesting. That's cra any value? That's busted. Okay, Crow Kanyeg Zimbi. It's a land. Yay, lands! I like lands. Okay, uh, the Crow Kanyeg Zimbi enters the battlefield. When it enters the battlefield, you gain two life for each ninja you control. There we go for the ninja, the ninja players there. Sacrifice Crow Kanyeg Zimbi. Add four man your mana pool. It's a green, green, red, black ritual for crying out loud. This is worse than dark ritual. Oh, maybe, well, maybe not. You can't play enough of them in one turn. But if you have like explore, or there any or any anything that allows you to play several things in one turn, I mean it. It danger big time. This is worse than a ritual. Borker trab, yeah, Borker tribal lands. Not broken at all. Just a more powerful black lotus. <laughs> What the hell is that statement supposed to mean? It's not Bork, Bork, Bork. Where's the Bork coming from? Oh, it's the, yeah, the, it's a Borker land. <laughs> the land, land Borker. All hail Borkers. Does Borker mean something? I, you guys seem to know what Borker is before I do. Doesn't he have it? Yeah, doesn't even need to tap to sacrifice it. Not that it matters. It's not like lands have summoning sickness, and this thing isn't coming into play tapped anyway. And we can gain two life. For you know what? So it's like Black Lotus, 
you can't have any mana. You gotta specifically get the green, green, red, black. And it, like, buffs your your ninja deck. Mm. What an absolute abomination. Definitely not getting printed. Stone of the Sea Track. It's a four mana artifact. Whenever a creature with flying enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one. If you do, you may pay two! Oh, what? The price is going up! I thought I could pay one! This is like some sort of... I don't know, it's it's like it's some sort of scam. All right, now you got this far, we need you to pay like a little bit more. Now if you pay that, that creature gains flying until end of turn. Oh God, that's a lot of mana I have to pay for. <laughs> Imagining this, how this would trigger an actual game. All right, enters the battlefield, I'll pay the one, resolves. Okay, another trigger, I'll pay the two, now this creature has flying. And it's only, it's only until end of turn. It's only for cre, like it will literally have flying for no reason. Like, I can't even block or attack that turn unless the creature has haste. Makes no... Yeah, the Nigerian Prince scam, the card. And in the end, we'll give you flying. Do you like the idea of flying? Do you ever wish you could fly? What you could do for the low, low price of one mana. Yeah, make the... Oh, and, oh yeah, it's, yeah, it's like... Yeah, selling flying to a bird. Oh, yeah, I forgot. It's a creature with flying airs of battlefield, so it already flies. This is a big, big scam. Double the flying. This, this multiple double the flying cards today. Anyway, this card. Um, but is it doable? Not really. Like it has no strategic purpose. It's absolutely pointless. It's, it's funny because it's a strictly better <laughs> Hoder Giant. Is it? Is it now? We the Hoder Giant already had this ability more or less locked into the card. God, I never thought of no mess likes the stuff uh, AI comes up with. Yeah, one day, one, one day, one day we're gonna be playing with these cards. Okay, the Fire Shound Shield. It's a one mana artifact with Demonstrate. When you cast the spell, you may copy it. If you do, choose an opponent to also copy it. Does this just go on for forever? Because then they copy it. And then they choose an opponent that copies it. I think you'll have infinite fire shound uh, shields on the battlefield. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player loses one life. What the hell? Do I really want this card? At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player loses one life. So I get it, then someone else gets it. But if we copy it enough times, we just have infinite copies. I don't even know if it stops. Or is it just you get one copy uh, and that's it. So, and I'm also losing the life. Yeah, it's group slug, so we all we all die. Symmetrical effect can be good. It's not it's an interesting card. It's like the rack, but it affects you too. Game of chicken, maybe. Well, I guess so. I, oh, you if you do choose an opponent also when you cast it, you may copy it. Ah, you only get one copy. Well, you only get one copy and demonstrate. I think it'd be interesting if you everyone gets to decide how many fire shound shields are on the battlefield. Basically siphoning everyone's life. It's a cool card. I think this is doable. It's, um, it'll be an annoying card to deal with. Do you have burn players would love this? I think a burn player would love this card. Just turn one fire shound shield, and then basically they're like speeding up the game. It'll deal at least like four or five damage over the course of the game. Of course, they're going to deal with beating to themselves. It's three damage each turn if you copy it. I guess so. Hello, Furrow. It works like this. You cast it, you may copy it, but also someone else gets to do that. I guess, yeah, I guess the downside... Well, I, I I don't know how to interpret this card. So it's possible you give one to yourself, you give it to somebody else, and they give one more to you. Eh, might have... Well, hey, you gotta be careful in the Death Shadow Dung. You don't want to end up killing yourself here. The opponent copy is not a may effect. Really? You may cast this, you may copy it. If you do, choose an opponent to also copy it. Am I even giving this to anybody? Or do, am I just casting this and then I can copy it and then I give my opponent, the, choose an opponent to also copy it? I don't get it. Okay, anyway, uh, I hope this works the way we think it does. I can instantly kill them. I can instantly kill myself. All right, moving on. Loyalty abilities on non-planeswalkers. Loyalty abilities on other permits can be activated like normal once per turn, but only if no player has previously blah, blah, blah. Non-planeswalkers are not sacrificed for having zero loyalty counters. 
Uh, it also cannot be attacked like a Planeswalker, since it is not one. So something can have a loyalty ability, but if it's not a Planeswalker, it cannot be attacked. All right, good to know. The Warkite Warbatican. War Warbashian, if I'm reading that right. It's a uh, white green four generic for a 4 4 Dragon Bear Shaman. And the AI nailed the art. That is a Dragon Bear Shaman. All right, so it passes on art alone. It's got flying. Whenever Warkite Warbashian War Warbatician, uh, attacks, it deals two damage to each opponent. It's honestly doable. All right, we got a real card here. <laughs> it's probably not a bad rare to pull in limited. It's basically attacking for six. Zick is big Zyber, huge fan of this thing. Off color but fair. It's a uh, it's green. Green does some damage sometimes. We got the lightning scream. The scream of light. We call that thunder. It's a land. It taps at a colorless mana. Pay one. Tap. Sacrifice lightning scream. Search your library for any number of instant cards. Exile them. Then shuffle. Okay, that's a doable card. I have no idea what you're gonna do with this card. Any number of instant cards. Exile them. Then shuffle. All right, chat. Does anyone want to the, accept the challenge of how to break this thing? Because I certainly don't know how. I guess it's some deck thinning. Not the way I want to do it. I mean, I don't want to flood out. The last thing I want to do is draw more lands. EDH stable with Thoracle? Maybe. Exile entire library? If your entire library is uh, instance, sure. Thanos is Oracle, but there's already a card like that. I don't understand. No, I don't think it works like any number. It, only, only the instant cards. I can't exile the whole deck. Unless my whole deck is instant cards. And then the lightning scream. I guess if you feel like you're done with instants today. Yeah, okay. We're not. We don't need any more instants. We're done. Okay, it pass. It's doable. It's technically doable. Maybe it would even Zyber for some people. Okay, we got the Wayward Nostrabon. It's a red, red, five generic. 10, 10, Beholder Land. Looks more like a dragon to me. Uh, okay, it's the Wayward Nubs Nostrabon's power is equal to your devotion to vehicle. I thought it was 10. Whenever Wayward Nostrabon attacks, create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. If you control a tree folk or a wizard, create a 6-1 red elemental creature token with trample. It's a token generator. I don't get it. So it's power is equal to your devotion to vehicle. For anyone who has a, like a vehicle or a car, a car museum, a car garage, for as many vehicles as you have, that's how big the stupid Nostrabon is gonna be. 10 is just an illusion. I guess it's not even useful. I worship his this car. Where's the vehicles here anyway? What do you need a vehicle for? You look like a dragon. You literally look like you could fly. The number of vehicles. Vehicle support and good power. Okay, what is devotion? Devotion is supposed to be you get some benefit for each mana symbol uh, on the cards on the battlefield. Like if your devotion is red, you count up all the red mana symbols on your cards and that is your devotion. But apparently in here we have devotion to vehicle. I guess it's the colorless on the uh, vehicle's casting cost. What's an F1 driver's devotion to vehicle? Probably very, very high. Doable by hand. I don't even think it's doable. I don't. This card makes no sense to me. Devotion to vehicle? Get out of here. Can't be devoted to vehicles. Basic lands and types. Man, they're trying to teach us the rules today. The rule book is enormous. Non non-land cards with basic land types cannot tap for that mana. Example, creature forest cannot tap for green. Really? So it has to be like forest creature. What does Dryad Arbor say? Okay, that's good to know. Aiden number. Red for generic for a 4-3 spider with reach. Aiden number can attack unless you control no creatures. This never gonna attack then! <laughs> So, so, so you basically, you're doomed to never attack because I'm going to at least control one creature. That's you! It's a four th so it's a 4-3 reach for 5 mana. So it just can't. Aw, oh, damn it, I'm a creature. It's like, should I attack today? No, 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 you know what? Let's let's not attack today. I'm a creature. Not do Well, it is technically, it's technically doable, but it has, it's just crap. Yeah, basically, yeah, this is just a really fancy way of calling it Defender. Can't attack unless you control no creatures. 
I'm just trying to figure out how do you make this guy attack? You turn it into an artifact? Oh, but it still has to be a creature when you attack with it. Oh, it's, just, it's very silly. It's, it's, it pat, it's, I think it's doable, but it's just pointless. It has to be put onto the battlefield attacking. Oh, yeah, that's how you have to do it. So you basically, uh, put onto the bow, like, use a card, put a creature onto the battlefield, uh, tapped and attacking. That's the only way you can attack. It's like Ultra Defender. Yeah. It's the, it's the next level above regular Defender. You, you will not attack. Ever. For no reason. Give it ninjutsu. Turn it into a, yeah, uh, I, yeah, I guess you could turn it into a vehicle. That might work. That might do it. The aid in number. Okay, Nantuko Worm. We've got a green, green, two generic, three, three, vampire warrior. All right. I guess that's what, a, those damn worm vampires. It's got trample. When Nantuko Worm enters the battlefield, create a four, four green beast creature token. That's broken. Uh, whenever a creature you control dies, you may pay six mana. If you do, choose a color. This ability triggers only once each turn. That makes no sense. And then, uh, pay X, sacrifice Nantuko Worm, create a 6-6 six, six red dinosaur creature token with trample. And trample! And haste. Double trample. Two is better than one. Exile it at the beginning of the next end step. It's close! Like, it's very, very close to being doable, but it's, uh, actually just a bit too stupid. But, uh, at least it was perfect English. We could read it all the way through. <laughs> I choose purple! Yes. We all choose purple! Purple, or gold, or silver. And the, this ability triggers only once each turn. Name something, damn it! It's redundant. Okay, we got the Fortress Haunter. A black 3 generic 3-1 giant warrior. Protection from vampires! Alright, we have the protection. Protection from Nantuko Worm. Uh, if a spell or ability was exactly it, what, well, what is it gonna, what else is it gonna be? Create a 2, 2 green centaur creature token. <laughs> if you play exactly what the card is that you did, you played, then we get 2, 2 creatures. Uh, pay 3, fortress, haunter becomes a 4, 4 creature that's still a land. So we can actually buff it up by quite a bit. This sounds crazy. It looks like whenever anyone plays a spell or ability, we just get a 2-2 two, two green center for nothing. Cannot copy spell or ability. Well, I guess that's what it means. Like, it's not going to count copies if a spell or ability was exactly it. So, and if it's copies, a copy is not exactly it. It's a clone. You're a carbon copy. You're not the real thing. You're not the OG. Yeah, this card is exactly it. Second ability makes no sense. No, it makes some sense. And actually, I think it's broken. So essentially, whenever you do something, this jerk gets a 2-2 green centaur for no reason. And against the vampire deck, it, uh, you can't do anything. It's got protection from vampires. Oh, double creature. Makes, and it makes, yeah, and it makes a second creature. Well, it makes millions of creatures. And it can buff itself up to a 4-4. Anyway, um... Yeah, we'll pass it. We'll give it a pass. It's a weird card, but I I don't know. It might maybe it's broken it, it, I mean it could danger. I don't know 2-2 two, two creature for every single time you play a spell and if anyone was if a spell or ability was exactly it So that means you or anybody else play playing spells it could be above and beyond broken and I'm just not uh, accounting for it Okay uh, we're gonna look at more crazy AI generated nonsense. We gotta thank our sponsors today FusionGamingOnline.com My one-stop shop to buy all my magic cards Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-earth have come out And if you need any of the competitive or casual staples Like the one ring itself, you know where to get them from you get them at FusionGamingOnline.com Don't forget to use coupon code Nikachu though for 5% off all your purchases and it supports the channel we're also going to thank Mana Traders, the premier place for renting magic cards online. Real cards! It's not this AI-generated nonsense. To play um, whatever nonsense deck you want, though. You can unlock your creativity when you're renting with Mana Traders. You can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below. Or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore B3R. And now back to... The Dark World. Of the AI generated cards. Yeah, make that money. We love our sponsored segments. Vehicle creature type. If an artifact creature 
has or gains the vehicle type, it does not need to be crewed to tap and attack. It is already a creature. Well, that's good to know. You may still crew an uncrewed vehicle creature if it has the crew ability. The creature will gain the artifact card type. That is weird. Okay, Mystic Stalker. You're stalking me. Call the police. Okay, we got a blue, two generic. Caribou. It's more like stalking, like moving vehicles but it has flying okay so it, it's, it's actually safe from moving vehicles flies over them tap target creature gains flying and vigilance if it's green i would never play i uh, whoops I, I would never play this card but i mean it passes it's, it's yeah, more double flying support well you can give other creatures flying target creature gains flying and vigilance if it's green so you give green create finally green can fly a blue bomber thanks so much for the super chat uh it's broken tapping lands is an ability oh yeah that's true that's true yeah talking about this last one you tap any lands for mana you get a 2-2 green center creature token all right it's, pro it's probably broken um i have nothing i'm on on it my tank's on empty. I'm trying to discuss this card. I mean, green green usually doesn't fly, so this is giving green something that they always wanted for that Simic deck. It's great. It's great in Simic. Are the horns actually wings? I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's just. I think it's just floating in the air, like you know, like Ru like Rudolph and all the other reindeers of Santa. Permanent vigilance and flying, not until end of turn. That's true. And also not a land. They're the the one for white. I don't, don't know what that means. Only caribou are white tokens. Legendary creature Rudolph. It probably should be Rudolph. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna give it a pass. It's harmless as far as I'm concerned. Cauldron of the Blast. That's pretty cool. Okay, we have a black black instant. Create a zero one red goblin creature token. Sacrifice a goblin. Cauldron of the Blast deals two damage to target creature. If you control a land or planeswalker, draw a card. Well, of course you're gonna have a land. How do you cast this card with no lands, but you have the planeswalker? It's an interesting card. You sack. I mean, it's totally fine. Any goblin players looking for this card? Sack one of those stupid useless tokens. I, I'm, I'm guessing you can't sack the token that you get from Cauldron Blast because that's as it resolves. But I, I could be wrong. I don't. Does it does it work like this? You say basically deal to to a creature, draw a card. If I understand this card correctly, like there needs to be a goblin in play already that I'm going to sack, and then as Cauldron of the Blast resolves, I create a zero one red maybe to replace it, and then um, and then I draw my card. It's like the old ones that say sacrifice a permanent add black 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 black. The the funny thing is that you don't get the goblin before you have to sack a goblin. Goblins don't need more token generators. It would have would have been worded as an additional cost to sack a goblin. How is so hold on, is it on the stack and I just get to sack goblins? Is it one of those cards like while it's on the stack, I get to activate this ability? Because then I can, yeah, th then now I'm looking at like you can sack multiple ones at once. That makes this insane. Basically for each goblin I sack, I'm dealing damage and I'm drawing cards out of it. That's just absolutely broken as hell. Okay, this card, we, <laughs> upon closer inspection, this card is insane. Every Rakdos goblin deck would go nuts with this thing. We got Cyclone! As someone who has worked in AI development, these streams are some of my favorites. Keep up the great work. I never thought about that. You're welcome, Cyclone. We're probably attracting a lot of uh, AI developers around here. No, this uh, isn't... Well, it's not infinite. I mean, it's it, it's going to be equal to how many goblins I have in play. But, like, one card that I can sack a bunch of useless go like the go... Like, most goblins are just 1-1 one, one morons that, you, that are useless l later in the game. They're just like, well, anyway, they're all crap. Very on color pie too. That's true, yeah. How is this broken? You only have like two goblins. Well, you don't need to do it on turn two. And by the way, turn two, deal four damage, draw two cards. Hey, that's not bad. That's a really good card. So anyway, this is, uh, this card could be, it could, it could hit danger. 
It could, it's either playable. I don't know. I, it, maybe I'm over exaggerating this thing because if there are no goblins in play, it sucks. And in response to the card even being on the like even going on the stack, um, I can't remember how does lightning storm work. It, does it resolve and you get to use the ability on the stack, or you just get to use the ability on the stack? I think it's good, but not broken. You may only sack one goblin. It's not the one you create with cauldron. No, it says, um, sacrifice a goblin, so you can do this multiple times. Peter thinks it's Zybers. All right, we're going to... You guys don't think it's danger? Okay, we're going to keep... We're, I guess we give it a pass. I think it's a very dangerous card. Very, very, very dangerous. The Gobbo is going to strike back. Voracious Pillar Assassin. Black 2 generic for a 2-3 Cephalid. That is a very ugly Cephalid. I guess this is like the Cephalid without its mask on, I guess. The Assassin enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it for each plus one, plus one counter on it. <laughs> what the hell? This is like, I don't know, the, the double take. If you've got this, you get this. If you have flying, you get flying. You have a plus one plus one counter, you get a plus one plus one counter. Okay, but by default, it will get nothing. It will just get nothing. But so if you have something like, I don't know, what would do it? Not hardened scales. It'd be some, it's gotta be something like, I guess, um, there's like a shapeshifter. And like, it, you know, there are some cards, enters the, your creatures enter the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it. And then I guess in this case, it would just double it. It'll double it if it comes into play with anything at all. Yeah, it's not going to be infinite. It's just going to be double what it normally would be. If you blink it, I suppose. Yeah, it depends on the circumstances. How would this work if gave something gave counters on each of you? Well, that's the, uh, it wouldn't. Enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each. This, this is like an as it enters the battlefield thing. So it's just going to enter the battlefield with whatever. Yeah, Metallic Mimic is what I was thinking about. So you Metallic Mimic, named Cephalid. Metallic Mimic says, creatures of that chosen type will enter the battlefield with a, count, with that, with a counter. Uh, and so this would just now then enter the battlefield with two counters. It's a very crappy card, but it's doable. It's a doable card. No mana cost versus zero mana cost. Okay, I think we all know how that works. If if it can only be cast through an alternate means, yeah. I think that's a pretty common, commonly known one. Moralize! You got no morals, you're gonna have them now. Okay, we have a white 2-2 two -two flash flying creature! The, wow, the power creep! That's insane! What power creep? Okay, we have a <laughs> one mana, just flash it in. So it's like Savannah Lions with wings. And we have white sacrifice moralize, put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Each opponent loses 23 life! The width this is broken! <laughs> it danger big time! Yeah, each opponent, everyone but you. Oh, it's super it danger. One thing she was the blood for those who for interest you by weak. Then just goblin home is an all clean keep after letter. Seer Daring, the Ogres. There's not even an Ogre in here. Instantly, uh, instantly ban. Send it to the ban list! It's broken. Well, not necessarily, well, you gotta, you need enough mana. You might only have one white source by turn one. I guess it's, basically you start the game, Planes, Mox Diamond, Moralize. Anyone have a counter spell? Or I guess you could, like, go Cavern of Souls, Human. Uh, Moralize, Mox Diamond, good game. Shall we go to the next one? Uh, all right, let's scoop it up. Basically, in a game like that, like, you shuffle your deck, everyone just keeps their hands and just continues as if the game didn't actually end in the first point, in the first place. Just joining, we'll have to rewatch the entire stream, but hi, you're welcome. You're coming in at a good point. Moralize can target itself with its own ability. So, yes. Sacrifice moralize put a minus one. That is true the way the world the rules work. So first you have to uh, Declare an ability choose targets and then pay costs so you can so the way So you have to declare the ability. I'll declare the sacrifice moralize ability declare the target target moralize and then Pay the cost which is sacrifice moralize, but it was already targeted at the point that I sacked it. Oh, no, wait a minute It won't work. Yeah, then it will be dead and then the whole thing gets countered. 
But it might as well on target creature. So we actually do need one other creature on the battlefield. If there's no target upon resolution, then the rest of that spell just gets countered. Oh, so we do need something else. Look, they... Look how they, uh, they balanced it! <laughs> they balanced the broken turn one win card. Anyway, we're still disqualifying the stupid thing. <laughs> oh, that's such a stupid card. Well, it can target itself, but it won't resolve when the ability resolves. Yeah, even though that sacrifice ability would be too OP. What a wild card. Arcbound Lightning! That sound- that's the first name today that sounds like a real Magic the Gathering card. Blue, 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 one generic for human cleric. It's a 3-3 three, three flyer. When Arcbound Lightning enters the battlefield, return target enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That... That's da That could be a problem. Okay, tap. Add one man of any color. If you do, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Add one. So we, it's a mana dork, sort of. It's more like a mana beef. If you do, put a counter on target creature you control. So we add mana, beef up our creatures, and we can return enchantments from the graveyard to the battlefield. This honestly looks like a commander card. It's like a serious commander card. Yeah, it's Zybers. I think some people really w would like a card like this in their deck. Very strong, maybe fair. I think it's fair. I mean, it's it's a four mana, like, uh, replenish for one enchantment. Uh, it's card advantage. Last ability is a bit weird, but, you know, whatever. And it's a decent, like, creature in itself. It's all upside, baby. In a blue blink deck, that's broken. Well, blink away. With like a bunch of stud to get the angel out quicker and then make where you can't kill it. I don't know what you're oh, you must be talking about the last card. Doable and expensive. It's not, well, it's not expensive. It's not expensive for the mono blue deck. Not expensive for the mono, whoops. We flying. What happened here? All right, I'm, I'm gonna give it a pass and then we'll move on. Oh God, I don't even want to read this. <sighs> Okay, Crawl, Bone, Stow, Uncorker. It's for a black. It's a black artifact. It's got a very nice picture though, so I mean, I'll, I'll give it a little bit, give a little bit of love for that. Tap. Sacrifice another non-land, non-token, non-token creature. Is exiled. With Crawl, Bone, Stow, Uncorker. Crit X two two green worm permanent. Votes. Vote deeply, people. For as long as. Ziddy D's this way. Kind could creatures put to that's I read. <laughs> we yeah, skip <laughs> We vote skip! That's what we vote. You can either vote deeply, you can vote flying, or you vote skip. We're gonna vote skip. What is the last one? When the stow dies, draw two cards, then discard three cards at random from each instead of comes by well, this is just way too Chaos ensues! Chaos ensues far too much. This is the worst leap worded card I've read on this show. Mostly because it's it just keeps going on. It, it doesn't stop. This guy should have stopped. This this card should have stopped at like two senses. And it's just, but it just powered through its whole speech all the way to the end. With confidence. And no shame. Extreme. Alright, now lands with mana costs. Uh, lands with mana costs cannot be cast. They can only be played as a land. However, it is still. It's still okay, so it has the mana value and color for the abilities. Alright, that's interesting. So you don't cast the lands. Mog Ergoni uh, Ergonizate. It's a blue, two generic enchantment. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to you by sources of your choice. What? Permanently? What, what are the sources? When do I declare this thing? Prevent all damage that will be dealt to you by sources of your choice. All right, I choose your creature at combat. Uh, lightning bolt on the stack. I, I choose your lightning bolt. Or do I have to like just do? Do I have to declare all sources when it resolves? Okay, I choose all the creatures in play. Your lightning bolts, your lightning helixes, uh, your your stupid drain life cards. Yeah, so just all of them. I can't. You can't. T you can't touch me here. Yeah, I could choose you. Just choose the players. Choose all sources. Basically, every time you want. And then unlimited. <laughs> Nicholas is like, I need this in my deck. Please make this a reality. Might work if it is choose as it enters. Yeah, I know. This is just stupid. <laughs> Absolutely not. 
How does this work on the stack? It doesn't. Can't you just say the source is everything from a player? Yeah, I would just choose all the players. Solid build needs reminder text. Needs, or it, need, it very specifically needs to explain how this card works. Sanctum of Memory. All right, it's a uh, three mana artifact shooting hoops. I didn't know they had basketball in the multiverse. This is so weird. Okay, pay X, tap, target player loses one life. Okay, X can be whatever you want. It could be zero. Whenever Sanctum of Memory attacks, which is very awkward, target player reveals a dunker with power five or greater. The <laughs> The Dunker! Target players reveal... But one, but they can't, we can't force them to reveal a Dunker! The Dunker deck has arrived. Damn, you revealed Jordan! Damn it, yeah. You gotta... Well, who, I, I'm not very familiar with basketball. What, there's like LeBron James. There's like Michael Jordan. I know he's like an old... Uh, an old... Relic of basketball. Yeah, dunker creatures. I don't know how many dunker creatures there are in this game. None, really. And you'd have to be pulling out, like, cards from, I don't know, those basketball collectible cards. Okay, oh yeah, I'll show you a LeBron. Crater Hoof is a... <laughs> Crater Hoof is a dunker. Oh yeah, I forgot about Shaq. I asked for Shaq to stand by me. Dunker, Borker, War is next set. X, yeah, X does, means absolutely nothing here. Would Dunkin' Donuts work? I hope so. Yeah, we need MTG-themed Air Jordans on our life. My basketball knowledge it ended with first Space Jam. Dunker has effects when revealed. Yeah, if it target reveals a Dunker with power 5 or greater. But the, nothing happens. Anyway, not doable. Not doable. Could Liliana dunk? I don't know. I've never seen her on the, on the, it's called the basketball court. Don't know if she's got moves. Nataria Golem. It's a red, red, three generic, uh, five, four goblin warrior. Whoop. Trying to center this thing. Okay. With trample, the spell costs red more to cast for each color of mana spent to cast it, cast it. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so it like actually incentivizes you to cast this card for mono red. It's not a particularly interesting card, but yeah, it's like that is actually really interesting. Some people in the past were saying, how can we make mono colored spells? Like, how can we in well, how can we power creep mono spells? Um and maybe it's possible if you if your opponent is forced to pay like white black or green mana then they have to actually pay more for that thing should be like an eight seven yeah that'd be interesting this card combos with the card from the last ai stream where you get rewarded for failing to cast successfully oh my god you people remember the actual cards from these streams well after i watch the stream they, these cards go in one ear and out right out the other or get around artifact tapping for more mana. Oh, yeah, that's right. So you can't cheat on the artifacts. Hold on. This spell costs red more to cast for each color of mana spent to cast it. Oh, no, no. I Actually, it's only colored mana. So it secretly costs six mana? I guess so. Yeah, so it's going to be at least six. But p potentially more. Those shoes are Crocs. Oh, yeah, there is. We're in Crocs in the multiverse. Congo Bow with Midnight One. Anyway, well, it it's doable. I wouldn't play this card by any means, but it's a doable card. We got Ixar, the Enflex Dress. Black, 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 three generic. Pace, it's, sorry, it's a 6-6 six, six Elemental Angel. Sweet art. Menace, Trample, and Haste. When Ixar, the Enflex Dress, enters the battlefield, target opponent loses X life, and you gain X life, or X is... One plus the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. That is a real card. That could be printed in the next Commander Masters. People are already calling. People are calling it. It's Zybers. Elemental Angel seems pretty cool. Also very interesting. I don't know how fair. I don't know how fair it is. It's probably it's probably fair. It's six mana for crying out loud. Oh, it's definitely gonna be a pass. 
And I'll, like, it'll do nothing. You have no instants or sorcerers in your graveyard. Isn't that really freaking busted, though? I don't know! <laughs> Print it still. Zybers, I'll buy. You hear that, Wizards of the Coast, Steve Cooper? It's got their wallet out. Print this damn thing. Haste is pushing it. Whatever, it's Commander. Someone gonna suck it up. Someone gonna suck up six damage. All right, moving on. Oh, and blink it. Ooh, blinking it might make it busted. Non-flying angel. Uh, well, look how big those arms are. I don't know. Something's weighing it down. This picture is so wild. It's like from some sort of void or something like that. If you come back from a black hole, yeah, you're gonna look like this, and you're not gonna be able to fly anymore. Okay, we got the online game Raptor Baron. <laughs> what the hell? It's a green, 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 two generic, six, six. Sphinx is an animal. You have to be flexible, exclamation point. You choose monsters. You and all the bad guys choose monsters. Otherwise, the fourth player dies. What does that have to do with magic? I get the sense, like, it's it's mixing some other game or sort of, sort of children's book into this card. Yeah, if you're not flexible, you lose. Don't be like, don't be one dimensional. Don't be just attacking. Don't be just burning people down. Sometimes you gotta be patient, all right? And also for the control players, sometimes you can't always be patient. Sometimes you gotta be aggressive. This is the Robo Rose Water Stone. Is that Jim Carrey in the art? I don't know. What do you mean, the face of the this dragon? I'm pretty flexible with choosing magic cards. Does that work? Hopefully. That face though. He's the one that spawn kills you over and over in that one MMO. RIP fourth play. <laughs> yeah, you choose monsters. You and all of the bad guys choose monsters. Who's the bad guys? Otherwise the fourth player dies. Anyway. This card makes no sense. Not doable. It's interesting, but not doable. This is a translated card, not AI generated. What? Not interesting then. Okay, Mystic Distraction. For black, it's a sorcery. Scry two, then reveal the top card of your library. You gain life equal to its mana value, and you get to investigate. Print it! Print it! Hot off the presses. It's like, you don't even draw any, it's like a slow card draw. You do get to investigate, so you get a clue token, which you can pay to and sack. Um, you get some life, I guess. That's about it. I don't even think it would be competitively playable, to be honest. I don't think it would break it into the competitive thing. Oh, did they, okay, did they translate this thing? The Baloth Raptor. Okay, let, this is, this is what this really does. It's a green, 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 two generic, six, six. Flying Sphinx, when Baloth Raptor dies, starting with you, each player votes for Strong Behemoth. If that player can't, they lose four life. So they're, they're forcing you to vote for Strong Behemoth. What kind of democracy is this? If you don't vote for the Strong Behemoth, you're losing four life, all right? You're gonna miss out. L Winter has already pledged allegiance to the, the, strong, the, the strong Behemoth. I have this one and the other one. A new contestant has entered the ele- <laughs> Yeah, we've got the, uh, the strong behemoth flying in deeply. Yeah, the Baloth Raptor. I guess this is, uh, a canvasser. And when it dies, we have to- if, when, we, This- it's only- we only vote after this thing dies. Yeah, it sounds like a very rigged election. Deeply, uh, deeply and flying offered some real things, but uh, strong behemoth is strong arming you into voting for them. Strong behemoth equals strong nation. <laughs> the independent party. What could make a player unable to vote for strong behemoth? I don't know. I mean, obviously they could do it. Okay, flying when it dies, starting with you, each player votes for strong behemoth. If that player, can I mean, I guess it's, I guess it's doable. It's a bit stupid. <laughs> Jim Con uh, Kim Jong Un designed it. Yeah, you will vote for Jim Kong. I don't even think you can vote in North Korea. All right, we're moving on to the Night of the Guild Pact. 
It's a white 2 generic 3-2 spirit with flying. Dredge spells you cast cost 2 less to cast. Wow, finally there's some incentive to actually cast those damn things. Soldiers you control have shroud. That's actually insane. I don't know if it's broken, but giving your... And it's not a soldier itself though, so it's gonna die. I think it's pretty interesting. I think soldier players would like this type of card. But the problem is, like, all the removal is just gonna stare right at the the knight of the guild pact. I guess it died already. That's why it's uh, that's why it's a uh, spirit. What did Pl Platonic say? Oh God! Finally, white soldier dredge. Yeah, that is. Uh, I didn't think about that. These are two completely separate archetypes that have nothing to do with each other. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, not a soldier itself. If it, but that's what makes it balanced. All right. If it's a soldier itself. Maybe it'd be broken. So give it a pass. Yeah, for those dredge soldiers. Who knows? Maybe the dredge players would just completely break that card. So let's uh let's hope that it doesn't it's not it's not the case. The Mask of Menace. It's a red, red, five generic, nine, nine giant soldier. Haste. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. All right. There's a lot of cards like that. You may cast spells from among those cards without paying their mana cost. Okay. Get the hell out of here. Get it out of here. Basically, you just have to rip all the lands from your the top of your library. You may cast spells. Yeah. So, like, basically, you just go through your entire deck. This is the new Bolus's Citadel, except it's way worse. Super broken. The danger is beyond control. Get it, get it out of here. Okay, do we have more sound effects to describe this thing? The Mask of Menace and Omniscience, I guess. Oh, you need something to exile the top card of your library, because if you hit a land, you are stuck until you can get rid of it. Um, is it a better Omniscience? You may cast spells from among those cards, but it's only from the top of your library. Omniscience lets... I wouldn't say it's better Omniscience, because Omniscience lets you cast cards from your hand without paying mana cost. Yeah, it's like Mystic Forge. Yeah, you and also maybe... Uh, sorry, we would use Mystic Forge to exile the top card. Or uh, maybe Lantern of Insight. Whatever. It's and not, not enough danger to counter the chance of the draw stack, therefore it's fair. Oh, God. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, moving on. Mask of Menace is a menace to society. Okay, the Bolt Outcast. It's a blue seven generic 4-4 four, four goblin. That is an expensive goblin. And it's so big. Magecraft, which is a real mechanic. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, counter that spell unless its controller pays three. This does nothing for you. So basically, if I cast... This is just self-destruction. Whenever you... It's like, it's not whenever a player casts. It's when you cast an instant sorcery spell. I tax myself. It's reverse... It's reverse stacks. It's useless. I don't know. Well, I don't know. You could maybe make use out of this? I have no idea. This combos with donate. Oh, yeah, that's true. You could give it to somebody with donate. So now all of a sudden... It's a one-sided, uh, I don't know, is that, that's that black card that taxes you by three whenever you cast anything. Yeah, great card to gift to your opponent. Har, har, har. Earthbound Nate! Thank you very much for the super chat. I give you an earthbound sound effect. Do you have any more earthbound sound effects here? No, just music. What about Hive Mind? I don't think this is that big of a deal. And then you run out of mana and your donate is countered. <laughs> it's, well, well, if you had 8 mana to put the Bolt Outcast in play, I think you have uh, 6 mana for the donate. This could be your commander for people who want a challenge. Yeah, like, I guess it's a handicap. It's a hand handicap commander. So when you're playing against new players, uh, you play this as your commander and basically it slows you right the hell down. Super, super slow. Even before donate, it's an 8 mana 4-4. Four, four. It's so bad. Yeah, it's a reverse value. So, yeah, Scorned Egotist is better. Finally, a card that makes Scorned Egotist look like a look like a tier 1 card. 
All right, that's it for Coffee and MTG today. That's it for the AI stream. And of course, if you want to be part of these streams, you got to be here Monday to Friday, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Be there or be square. Thank you very much for all your support, everyone who's a patron on Patreon, everyone who's a member on YouTube, and everyone who super chats to be part of the show. I really appreciate it. And of course, we got to thank everyone who's here in the morning. If you like Manos, we got Erland, Clang, Goss, Abzo, PM, Kev, we've got Richard, uh, Steve, Lezio, we've got... Sorry, Loren, Loren, Lorezio. Uh, we've got Super Fast Tortoise, Loomis, Richard, Mr. Deadhead, Nadiria. We got we got so many people. I love all of you. Thank you so much for coming out in the morning. Because without all you guys, the show is not the same. We wouldn't vote for Deeply or Flying, would we? Without all of you. So as usual, my coffee crew, keep brewing up them coffees, and we will keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you at the next cup. <laughs>